we all know that dealing with the deaths of current former wrestlers is a thing when it comes to being a professional wrestling fan. Sadly, but absolutely true, right? And not all of them always die under tragic circumstances. Not all of them die young, but certainly a number of them do, right? And over the years and my decade plus of doing YouTube videos about professional wrestling, I've certainly done my fair share of in memoriam videos and remembrance videos. And, you know, those are never fun. Don't really look forward to them. However, I have to say, and it's a big reason why it probably has taken me so long to record this, is this is truly one of those videos I never wanted to do, never looked forward to doing, never had any desire to even think about doing because, you know, when I think about legends and when I think about immortals, I think about freaking Psycho Sid! Sid ruled! No, I'm putting that in past tense as if he ever stopped ruling. He always ruled. He rules and will continue to do so even in the freaking afterlife. But, but this is a guy that, when I think selfishly, and as we so often do when we think about death and loss, we, we think about how these people that we never really knew personally impacted our lives, right? That's our way of processing it. That's our way of contextualizing and understanding it. And when I think about this channel and myself and the stuff I've done over the years, some great, some good, some right? There are certain things I'm going to be associated with. Even for those that like me, don't like me, doesn't matter. A big, gray, sexy pussycat talking about Mark Henry. A, what, in some, in their opinions, their wrong opinions, is an irrational hatred for the Memphis mid-card piece of crap! Talking about the best thing about Dino Bravo is that <laughs> he's dead. 15 Reasons Randy Orton Sucks. I could go on and on, right? Known for several different things. But one of those things that I've obviously always been known for is in relation to Psycho Sid. <laughs> and we'll get, we'll get to why that is in a little bit. But, you know, the word legend and icon is thrown around too often. It really is. And you don't want to be too disrespectful you know, because somebody just passed away and it might be a way that somebody comes to grips with it. It helps them with the coping and the mourning and sadness and everything else, right? But it is a word that gets thrown around too much. When it comes to Sid Udy, though, in the scope of professional wrestling, he's a legit legend. And even when I heard the news of his passing a few weeks ago and... You know, I could say proudly, even at work over the past few weeks, like basically the entire month of September, my Zoom background pick was Sid in a black vest in like 1996, 97. It was just fantastic, magnificent. And you had some people that didn't recognize him, and I publicly shamed them for that. And then you had others that did, and they would tell me stories about going to the Richmond Coliseum and seeing him and this and that watching him back in the 90s, and yeah, like, any chance you get to bask in the glory and the magnificence of a psycho Sid, you're absolutely gonna freaking do it! But when you think about Sid, you know, this is a guy that you can look at so many memorable moments that he was a part of, that he was instrumental for, that he was responsible for, that it's easy to forget about all of them, right? He, in some ways, became a character of himself, a caricature, and sometimes became a punchline for certain things. But God damn it. You know, even sometimes when I've laughed at the expense of Sid, <laughs> and we all know why, and we'll get there, what you've never heard me say is anything negative about Sid. I don't think you ever have. And if it is, you're lying. Because he was freaking awesome. He was the master and the ruler of the world. But seriously, if you think about his career, 
Like one of the most memorable botches of all time is the Shockmaster's debut in WCW. Sid was there. Sid was in the background saying, Oh my God! How? Oh, I told you! That was Sid! Sid was there! And when you think about the Shockmaster and everything that that debut and that botch represents, how fitting and appropriate it was as everybody was losing their shit, including Sid, who was the one that got back to business and tried to do their damnedest to sell that shit, it was Sid! That's just one example of many moments that will go down in wrestling history that he was a part of. You know, people talk about him and some of the jobbers that he beat the shit out of over the years. He'll be remembered for that. This is a guy that when he came in to WWF, you know, one of his first big matches was against who? It was against Hulk Hogan in the main event of WrestleMania 8 where the WWF Championship match was Flair and Savage. And as much as we could talk about, well, that's because it was Hogan, it was politics, and then everything else. It's a lot easier to politic your way into the main event when Sid Justice is your fucking WrestleMania opponent. This guy was a fucking chiseled, mulleted Greek goddamn god who oozed presence and eased out charisma like nobody's business. I think about the career of Sid Udy. He main evented two WrestleManias against Hulk Hogan and The Undertaker five years apart. That is no small feat. Think about how many greats never main evented WrestleMania, let alone did it more than once, but were trusted enough, in his case, in that spot, to be in there with Hogan and Taker. Dudes of dudes of dudes, right? In terms of the WWF, in terms of wrestling history, these guys are at the top of the list. Sid was fucking there. Who'd he beat for his two WWF championship reigns, wasn't it? Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart? Those guys were the guys in that new generation era. But they weren't more awesome than Sid, that's for damn sure. Sid was so many things. He was unique. He just oozed badass. Believability. Seriousness. His ability to connect with the crowd and make them believe. And I always look at signature moments in a person's career. Survivor Series 96. Goes into Madison Square Garden. That year is all about Shawn Michaels, the Iron Man match, that overrated crap at WrestleMania 12. Like, it's about Sean, it's about Sean, it's about Sean. Until you get to MSG, and that crowd, outside of maybe a couple hundred teenage girls and women, are entirely, enthusiastically behind Sid. And this is at a time where it wasn't always cool to boo the, vil the hero and cheer the villain. It was just really hard to boo Sid, because he was so fucking awesome. Even his botches are legendary. Ah, can, can, can we do it again? No, we're live, pal. We remember that shit. You know and I know that you are half the man that I am. And I have half the brain that you do. And each week you come out here and try to make me look like a jackass. The shit at then days WCW with Goldberg smashing his car. Goldberg! Why? <laughs> and then, of course, the epicness, the iconic this of Sin 2001, where before the show, Johnny Gates, I got an idea for you, Sid. He told him, he told him to go off the second rope <laughs> because he needed to expand his offensive repertoire. So Sid, <laughs> listen to damn Johnny Ace of all people like, what the fuck would he know? 
<laughs> goes out there and tries to drop the big boot of justice to Steiner of all damn people off the second rope. And, ah! <laughs> His leg is broken like six different ways and he's sitting there in this prone position with his leg going in ways that it shouldn't go and the match is fucking continuing and you've got guys like Steiner bumping into his fucking leg as Sid is sit his broken leg by new Sid is sitting there the ah! <laughs> you know for so many other wrestlers that would be the thing that they're known for. It would be the only thing anybody ever talks about. And certainly I am known because of the backstory and everything else. Am I laughing at the injury? No, I'm laughing at all the others' backstory and circumstance and how perfectly it represents end state WCW. That was always the fucking point of this shit. <laughs> how could you not find it funny? But don't you get it fucking twisted. When it comes to wrestlers that I take as seriously as a heart attack, Psycho Sid is at the very top of the freaking list. Here, we want to talk about Sid's greatness. You could talk about the fact that he won his championships against Sean and Brett. He main evented WrestleMania with Hogan and Taker five years apart. When he would go to a WCW or a WWF or a WCW, he was always in a top spot. Not just because of politics or different circumstances, but because he fucking belonged there and he was a draw and people wanted to see this freak. And I mean freak in the most positive light I possibly can. And even when you think about at one point in time in the 90s, he goes to ECW. Here's Sid, this 6'8", 330 pound, chiseled, roided up, magnificent beast of a wrestler. Going into smart heaven, if you will. Hardcore fan heaven. That's the type of environment where a guy like him should be getting booed out of every ECW show that they do. He's supposed to represent everything that ECW at the time, the real ECW, when it was ECW, was about. And yet when Sid came there, the ECW fans did what? They absolutely ate that shit up and fucking loved that dude. Why? Because Sid was the master and the ruler of the fucking world. That's why. Even the behind the scenes stuff. You know, someday when Arn Anderson passes away, he better hope there aren't scissors in heaven because Sid's, Sid's coming for him, damn it. Like you got legendary stories of him and Arn Anderson almost fighting to the death, right? Like, my God. <laughs> you could go on and on. The stories about how Sid loved his softball. And he would sit there and not show up to shows because he was out doing the softball thing. You know, if anything, as much as we talk about wrestling and his impact and his legacy when it comes to professional wrestling, we should talk about with Sid how he could serve as a bit of a role model for all of us in the way we approach our professional lives. And when we talk about, and we hear so often about work-life balance. You want to talk about a dude that had his priorities straight. You want to talk about a dude who understand the importance of work-life balance and that you shouldn't just live for the thing that you get paid for. It was Sid. This was a guy that probably cost himself millions of dollars by not working and wrestling more because he wanted to do his softball thing, his hobby, his passion, his true love, and his other true love, which is spending time with his family. How many of us could benefit from having that type of balance and priority system in our freaking lives? Sid's not only a legend in wrestling, but in my opinion, he's a legend in freaking life too. Hold him up as an example of how to do things and how to live things. I'm telling you, man. So it was sad a few weeks ago to hear that he had succumbed to his battle with cancer and passed away, I believe it was, at the age of 63, right? Um, because, you know, for me, selfishly, you know, I've come to be associated with Sid and mentions of Sid and everything else. And like, you know, I've even joked about it before, there's only one person that can give a Hall of Fame presentation that does full justice to the entire career of Psycho Sid, and you're looking at him, you all know him. And while we know that would never happen, apparently, you know, it would never happen because WWE 
never wanted to put him in the Hall of Fame. Now, could you imagine expecting anybody to take your Hall of Fame honor seriously and not having somebody like Sid Udy in it? I just couldn't. I couldn't imagine it. I don't give a shit what type of excuses, what type of anything else you want to put out there. You find a way to make it happen and get it done. And it never happened. Like, I even remember in 2012 when he came back, I was hoping, like, hey, this is going to lead to him going in the Hall of Fame, right? He made that appearance and wrestled against Heath Slater. Like, that shit was awesome. To see Sid in all of his glory one more time. It's just amazing, man. This guy was a legend. Like, he made a lot of money. He was a star. He was a big star. Don't you get it twisted. And if he was unhealthily obsessed with wrestling and trying to maximize as much money as he could make from wrestling as many other guys did, he A, might not even have lived to his 60s, B, could have had an even more broken down body, and C, not had the balance in his life that was so critical and important. I respect him a lot because he wasn't all just about wrestling. He had his shit straight. He had the perspective. You know, I think about, when you think about Sid's stories, I think Lance Storm tweeted something right after he passed, talking about how Sid would show up in his jean shorts, he would put on his pads, he would go out to the ring, he would come back, take the pads off, and he'd fucking leave in his ring gear like a badass. Like, when you think about badasses, you think about Sid. He was legit, and we all knew it. And for years, we watched him. And we were mesmerized. We were transfixed by him. Because we knew he was legit. He was the real deal, right? Like, no bullshit. You know, and I always wonder from a WWF standpoint, is what happens if they would have made the right call at WrestleMania 8, which is putting him over Hogan? That was the right call. Oh, yeah. At that time, you absolutely could have made that work. And you could have spent a whole year building up to him and Hogan at WrestleMania 9 if you so desired. You could have kept Sid on the babyface track instead. And you could have built up for a year to get to him and Yokozuna at WrestleMania 9. Could you imagine, right, how magnificent that would be? I just think about his career, and he left us with a lot of memorable moments. You can have your five-star matches. Give me those guys that produce memorable moments that last a lifetime. Sid had those in abundance. And he had more of those than, frankly, some other legends that are legends that you might hold higher on the all-time career list. If you really think about it, his memorable moments, all of them, create this body of work. Even, wasn't wasn't he on Baywatch at one point in time in the 90s? Like... I could go on and on. Like, I just keep forgetting things because there's so many awesome, magnificent things when it comes to Sid. His empty Alamo Dome promo was fucking amazing if you've never seen it. Go watch it. You want to understand the essence of what the Sid character was and why people were so engaged and enthralled by everything that he did. Go watch that promo. I probably haven't even begun to do full justice to Sid Udy in his life and his career. I kn- was certainly heartened a few weeks back when I saw all of the like tributes and remembrances and well wishes pour in for him because, damn it, they were merited. They were deserved. And it was so cool to see that so many people had such positive memories and positive things to say about Sid. And I guess maybe if there's one lesson, one hope here, and I've said it before, I'll say it again, when it comes to some of these legends, icons of wrestling as they pass, I wish we would do more to celebrate them while they were alive and not wait until after they're dead and no longer around for them to be able to see like how much people, how much they meant to people. Um, Sid, you know, someday hopefully I'll be able to find a Sid poster and I'm going to put it up on the fucking wall. you goddamn right. It's going to be displayed prominently prominently Uh, no doubt about it I'll display it prominently until the day I die I need to get one as a matter of fact we need Sid shirts we need all of that shit because Sid was awesome Sid ruled the frickin world and when you think about legends who made a mark at a time of high interest in professional wrestling Sid doesn't have to take a back seat to anyone he had a hell of a career left behind a hell of a legacy, 
and a lot of great memories for all of us. And all I can say is thank you to them and God bless them.